Brother Jeff, won't you share with us tonight? Appreciate you, Junior. Um, this is good because I expect to have to stand up, and I can't do it very long. <laughs> I brought it to you, brother. But anyway, I want to say it's good to be here tonight. And I want to thank all those people that have prayed for me through WDFB throughout the summer of last year. It was a rough year for me and my family. Uh, we'd seen uh, seen God move in a lot of ways. He said He moves in mysterious ways, and I can testif testify to that. Mm. I'm going to try to give you my testimony tonight, but when I speak about my Savior, sometimes it makes me a little bit emotional. Amen. Right. And I've got That's some right. old friends here from Gary County sure. that I grew up with, I, and we was tough as nails, mm. and I hate for them to see me cry. <laughs> But that'd be all right. That's right. It may right. happen. Um, I know last January during the ice storm, I had a tree top and rolled over and hit my legs, knocked me back in some brush, and I've already had uh, a couple of different surgeries, corrective surgeries, and, and this one finally done my back end. I have degenerative disc disease, and uh, I laid all summer on the front porch. I'd make it out to the swing when Judy go to work. I'd take me a couple of bottles of water and the Bible. Of course, at that time I could see. I'd lay in that swing for eight hours till she got home. And I'd get back up, she'd help me in the house. And then I'd lay on the couch or the bed. I'd done this all summer long. It was a good chance to, you know, kind of lay back and, and think about life and uh, where life's taking you. I know my grandmother had told me when I was a child, she was a little Pentecostal, and she said, someday you're going to grow up and you're going to be a preacher. And as I got older, I thought, Grandma, you just don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I didn't want to be a preacher. Uh, not that I've got anything against preachers, because I'm going to have to be one now. All right. and, uh, <laughs> but uh, I figured we had enough of them. Mm. I figured we had enough of them. But there might be something that I could say that somebody else can't. You're right. Mm -hmm. That's you're why right. God calls different people. And I'm glad He has called me. Mm -hmm. I don't hear last year I told... Uh, Mildred and them here at WDFB, so I'm going to preach or die. And I didn't know it was going to come that close to being a reality. But anyway, I went on. Like I say, I was injured all summer, and I laid there. And I had really no choice but to have surgery. Um, I come to grips with that. Judy didn't like it. She was afraid something was going to happen. My oldest son, Jeffrey, he didn't like it because he felt like something was going to happen. And I felt like it was going to be all good until about two days before the actual surgery. I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning one morning and sat straight up on the bed. And there was a fear that had gripped me. And I knew where that fear had come from. It was the enemy had put that in my heart. I was so afraid of this surgery. And I sat there a while and I tried to pray and it seemed like nothing was happening. So I got up. At this time, I could walk on a cane. I went to the refrigerator and got me my faithful bottle of Pepsi at 3 o'clock in the morning. Went out on the porch because it was warm and set, looked at the stars and started praying to God. Mm. Nothing was happening. I wouldn't hear nothing. I come back in the house, turned on the TV, and Charles Stanley was preaching at 3 o'clock in the morning. Amen. And Brother Charles Stanley, he said, would you turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53, in verses 1 through 3, he read, and it talked about in verse 1 where God had uh, he had ransomed Israel back and they'd been redeemed. He had bought them with blood. And, uh, and he went on to say that, uh, it's probably not quoting this exactly right, but I can't see how to read it. I brought the magnifying glass, but that don't help much. So I'm just going to quote it the best I can remember. But it talked about when you walk through the river, that you'd not be drowned. Or when you yeah. walk through the flames, you'll not be burned. Mm -hmm. Know that you'll not even be seen or scorched when you walk through the flames. It said uh, that I know your name. And I found comfort in that, knowing that God knew my name. I sat to that night and read those little passages of scriptures I know four, five, six times. And finally I was able to lay back down and go to sleep. <coughs> well, it come morning, back surgery time. They wheeled me in and got me all prepped like they always do. And Judy come in when they got ready before surgery. And as I went back, of course they had done the, I always throw something in your veins for some reason. <laughs> I never remember seeing Judy. 
But I told her, I said, don't worry. I said, God knows my name. Hmm. You know, and they ordained me maybe a month or two before that. I thought, you know, I was thinking, why would God ordain me to let anything happen to me? Mm -hmm. And I felt confident. Well, a month later, I woke up, I'm in Lexington. I remember loading on the helicopter in Danville, and uh, they flew me to Lexington. My kidneys had shut down. I swelled up. I weighed, I think they told me, 327 pounds when I arrived at Fayette mm -hmm. County. And uh, it was all fluids. My kidneys just wasn't working. But uh, I got a chance to meet the boy. That He's a air medic, they call it, that flew me to Lexington. He was with me, and I, another guy that was there, his wife was also helped, but she wasn't there. But I talked to this boy, and he said, when he come back to the county, he said, I knew all these county guys. I've worked with them forever. Mm -hmm. But this medic was a new guy. I really had never met him before. And, Malcolm took me over and introduced me, and he said, Jeff, said, I told the guys when I got back, I said, we'll probably not see you again. We'll probably not see Jeff no more. Mm. But when I got to Lexington, the doctor over there would not look my family in the face. I was in a coma for 27 days, mm. and he wouldn't look them in the face for about 21 days because he told his head assistant, he said, don't you even give that family any false hope. He said, if this boy lives through the week, he'll be lucky. He's got less than 1% chance of making it. Mm -hmm. But you know what? <laughs> I am so glad that nobody has to listen to what man says because right. my God has the last call yes, sir. on the face of this earth. He decides when I go. That's right. He decides how long I'm going to stay here. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's decided I'm going to preach, and he's going to have to decide what I'm going to say. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm just going to leave it up to God. I'm not going to worry about that part. Yes, That's sir. up to Him. If He calls me, He'll provide a way. He'll open doors. Mm -hmm. He'll give me something to speak on. I was normally a pretty quiet kind of guy, if you can uh, believe that. <laughs> These people are sitting beside me. <laughs> they might see it a little different from growing up. Um, but somewhere along the 22nd or 23rd day, my kidneys moved a little bit. Mm. I mean, a very little bit. And Dr. Sinopis come out. It was the first time he looked my family in the face. He said, what about that man? Mm -hmm. uh, what about that man? He seen a little glimmer of hope after 20-some days. That where there was no hope. Uh -huh. Judy come in, and I remember waking up the first time after being laid there all this time, and, and I remember seeing Judy for the first time. And I told her, I said, I felt just like a little pup. I wanted to wrap right around her feet and not move because it was security for me. Sure. It was somebody I knew. I knew something was wrong. I knew I'd been down a long time. I didn't know how long. And, uh, through this coma, I had several silly, what I would call just silly dreams, which, you know, I worked in detention for a long time, and I know how drugs affect people, <laughs> and a lot of this was just drugs. But on the very end, before I woke up, Junior, I seen a place, and when I stepped into that place, it was so bright, and everybody there was wearing such white clothing. Their clothing was so white, it just stood out, and the grass was just a... a miraculous green and the flowers and stuff were pretty and we walked through that place for a little while and it just disappeared and then the next place I walked through it looked like old Jerusalem or something but it was real red and a glowing type place and uh, there was people that were drinking and using drugs and you know I don't know what God was trying to show me what is the difference between good and evil you know people need to come to this and avoid this or what but there was something he was showing me there. And uh, I remember singing this song after I'd seen all this stuff. I woke up and I'd seen Judy there. And I got to sing this. The first song out of my mouth was All Because of Jesus, I'm Alive. I was getting with it, Lord. <laughs>